polynomial long division is super confusing. It's really easy to make mistakes. And it takes a really long time, which is why I want to introduce a strategy in this video that's going to allow you to never use polynomial long division ever again. Now, if that sounds exciting to you, do me a favor and polynomial long divide that like button, because let me tell you, after you learn this strategy, that is the last time you will be using polynomial long division. I'm going to introduce this concept of synthetic division and synthetic division looks really random and kind of is, but I promise it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of mistakes. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to do with synthetic division is you're going to draw this kind of random L bracket thing. And our goal is going to be to fill this random L bracket thing in with some key pieces of information. Now, the first piece of information we need is going to be the coefficients of each term in our dividend. So that's going to be this cubic polynomial here, which has a coefficient of one in front of the X cubed, a coefficient of one in front of the X squared, a negative six in front of the X, and then we have just a negative eight at the end. So I'm going to write each of those coefficients inside my L bracket thing, and that's going to look something like this. Okay, first step. Now, the next piece of information we need is something that's going to go on the outside of the L bracket right here. And that piece of information is going to come from our divisor. In particular, we're going to set our divisor equal to zero in order to determine the value of X that makes that divisor equal to zero. Okay. And using some quick algebra here, just moving the two over to the other side, you can see that X equals negative two is the value that will make that divisor equal to zero. Okay. And that is going to be the information that we place right here. Okay, so we've got our synthetic division table set up and we're ready to go. First thing you're gonna do with your table is you're gonna take that first coefficient of one and you're just gonna bring it down and place it right here underneath your synthetic division table. Okay, so I've done that here. Now we're gonna take that one and we're gonna multiply it by this negative two that we got over here from setting our divisor equal to zero. So when I take one and I multiply by negative two, I get negative two and I'm gonna place that result right here underneath the second coefficient of one. All right, now the next part of this synthetic division algorithm tells me to take those two numbers and add them together. One plus negative two, that's just gonna be negative one and I'm gonna write the result right down here. Now the beauty of this whole synthetic division process is that's really it. You're just gonna repeat that process until you run out of terms. I'm gonna take that negative one, I'm gonna multiply by negative two, I'm gonna place the result right here underneath the next coefficient. Now in this case, that's gonna be two. And remember the next step is to just add straight down. So I take negative six, I add two. In this case, I get negative four and I place the result right here. I'm gonna repeat that process one more time to get this last missing piece of information. So negative four times negative two is eight. So I write my eight here, I add straight down and you're gonna see that I get zero here. Okay, so that is really the entire synthetic division process. Now, what have we done here? We've just created a bunch of random numbers. Now I promise these numbers hold a lot more significance than you might think. As it turns out, each one of these numbers is going to be a coefficient in our quotient, which is the result of our division problem, right? We took our dividend of this polynomial, divided by our divisor of x plus two, and we end up with our quotient, okay? Now, since we started with a degree three polynomial and we divided by a binomial with a degree of one, it should be no surprise here that our quotient will have an exponent that is one less than the dividend, right? Think about it like we divided out an x from x cubed, if we take x cubed and divide by x, we're going to get x squared. So our first term in our quotient will have an x squared. So I'm just going to write an x squared right here, right underneath my first little number here. Now, as it turns out, that one is going to be the coefficient on that term. Okay, I'm just going to write it in blue so that you can see it's, it's that same one. All right, so that's what I've done here. Now, the next term after x squared will be x if I'm decreasing in power by one each time. So my next term will be x, okay? And I'm gonna write just an x. Okay, so right there underneath that negative one. And the same rule applies here. That negative one is actually gonna be the coefficient on that x term. Again, I've just written it in black so you can see it's that same negative one. And now it should be no surprise that this negative four is going to be the last term in our quotient, right? If we decrease in power by one each time, we end up with like a little imaginary x to the power of zero here, but I'm not gonna write that just to keep things clean. So you can see that I ended up with a trinomial of degree two, and that is going to be the quotient that I get when I take that dividend and divide by that divisor. So I've just cleaned things up and placed that on top of our long division problem to show you that that's the quotient that I get when I divide that polynomial by that binomial. That's the synthetic division process. Now, one key piece of information that I wanna draw your attention to here is this zero, okay? This is a really special zero. This right here is our remainder. When we divided this polynomial by this binomial, we got a nice trinomial with a remainder of zero. And that's because X plus two divides nicely into that polynomial. Will your remainder always be equal to zero? 
Absolutely not. Will you be responsible for understanding how to divide a polynomial in a case where the remainder is not zero? Absolutely. Which is why you're gonna to wanna to head over to this video right here so that you can understand how that process looks. And I will see you there.